This is Michael Popak, Legal AF. No sweeter words have ever been spoken, perhaps in the English language, in the following. The court has regained jurisdiction over this case. That's the words of Judge Tanya Chutkin, who just issued a ruling regaining control over the D.C. election interference case now that it's been returned to her by the United States Supreme Court. And she's issued a new ruling, a new order, setting requirements for Donald Trump and the Department of Justice Special Counsel Jack Smith. She recognizes Jack Smith's um, validity and constitutional purpose in being a prosecutor, unlike Judge Aileen Cannon. She wants uh, Judge Tanya Chutkin, as we predicted on Legal AF just a week or so ago, is calling everybody else uh, and everybody involved in the case back to court. They will be required to attend a status conference on the 16th of August at 10 a.m. in her courtroom. Donald Trump doesn't need to attend by her order. And she wants a week before that on August 9th, just a few days away, a week or so away, she wants the parties, uh, Donald Trump's lawyers on one side and uh, the special counsel's office on the other to uh, meet and confer, have a conference offline <clears throat> and file a status report to propose how to get this case back on track. And in the interim, in the same breath, in just one page, not a paperless order like Aileen Cannon, but a real uh, honest to God order, she also denied one of several motions to dismiss that have been pending on the books, um, but were stayed uh, by the Supreme Court immunity case until they made their ruling. She ruled on an October 23rd, 2023 motion to dismiss on statutory grounds that Donald Trump had filed to argue that no part of the indictment properly stated a claim for the four criminal counts against him. A 34-page brief filed way back then. A, a pin was placed in the decision-making by the court until the immunity decision was finally rendered, you know, eight or nine months later. We now have that decision. 30 or so days went by, which is the requirement. It's back with Judge Chutkin. She's announced that she's back. She's holding hearings. Let's break it all down on this particular hot take. All right, let's first start with the, what we thought was going to happen has happened. The judge, having reasserted jurisdiction over the matter, having been given it back from the United States Supreme Court, back from the D.C. Uh, Circuit Court, which is her bosses, she's now back in control as the trial judge. It's been so long. Let's recap what this case is about. Four criminal counts against Donald Trump. Two for obstruction of an official proceeding. Two related to attempts to defraud the United States. Um, and they have to do with the use of the false electors and all of the other activities of Donald Trump to try to cling to power and stop the peaceful transfer of power. All listed in an indictment, only against him, one defendant, four counts. Now she's got a backlog. We had, we had said there's four or five motions that were in progress on the docket when the hammer went down by the United States Supreme Court and the stay was issued because immunity was being asserted. Now, she's, she's trying to get rid of the backlog. It's some of these issues, like the one on the uh, motion to dismiss on statutory grounds filed by Trump in October of 2023, I'll talk about on this hot take, um, fully brief, ready to go. She's denied it. She's denied it without prejudice for now. She's going to allow a renewed motion after she deals with the elephant in the room, which is how she's going to apply the directions of the United States Supreme Court in the MAGA right, six to three, which told her she's got to take the indictment from Jack Smith and she's got to apply their ruling and determine which of any of the counts and allegations and overt acts that are listed are going to survive their immunity decision. She's got a, she's got a lot of work to do. Talk about cleaning the Aegean stables. She's got a lot of work to do. She has two major things that she's got to do, and she's asking the parties to give her a recommendation about how to brief these things and on what timetable. And then she'll talk about them all and make her final ruling off the August 16th status conference. The two major issues that have been left to her by the United States Supreme Court is how to map their decision onto the indictment. You have an indictment, goes on for 70 or 80 pages. And it has dozens and dozens and dozens of allegations, overt acts, and different things that support the four counts. She now has to take their ruling, two parts of their ruling. One, she has to decide if any of the actions or any of the crimes that have been alleged 
that came out of the grand jury and the indictment fall into the bucket of absolute immunity, meaning arrive, arise out of core constitutional presidential power, uh, rebuttable presumption immunity, meaning official conduct, Donald Trump qua president, wearing the president hat, doing something about his official duties stretched to the outer boundaries as is required by the case law. Does anything fall into a rebuttable presumption um, immunity? And has the prosecution overcome the immunity, which is now their burden, in the allegations that they've made? In other words, criminal conduct, willful conduct that overcomes the uh, the uh, presumption of an immunity, or is the conduct fall into the, the last category of private, unofficial conduct for which there is no immunity? There's no, he does not enjoy immunity. She's got to do that. She's also got to decide if if the two out of the four counts for obstruction of an official proceeding survive a separate companion de decision by the United States Supreme Court, which has which was that most Jan 6 defendants who were merely, in their view, just trying to burn down the Capitol didn't actually touch the electoral certificates that were being certified, didn't try to rip them up, didn't try to steal them, didn't try to use false, false certificates at that moment. All of those counts have been vacated. But Donald Trump is that is a hench is the leader of of the of the gang that put together the f the fake elector certificates, which is at the heart of the indictment for for Jack Smith, and and even the decision on immunity by the Supreme Court, which said um, that m almost all the Jan Six defendants are not going to be able to be charged with uh, obstruction of an official proceeding. They said if there's false evidence involved which means the fake electoral certificates, I would suggest, then that count will survive. I think that count survive. those two counts against Donald Trump survive because of that carve out in the immunity decision based on learn teachings of, of judge, then judge Sotomayor, when she was on the second circuit before she was elevated to the court of appeals in a, in a, uh, in a decision, I think they're going to find false evidence equals fake elector certificates equals um, those two counts survive for Donald Trump. She's got to decide that. Ever feel like your morning coffee is more like a roller coaster than a smooth ride? Today's sponsor is for the caffeine junkies who find themselves in an endless cycle of coffee highs and lows. Mudwater, M-U-D-W-T-R, is a coffee alternative to get your energy fixed without your heart doing jazz hands every morning. Mudwater is like coffee's chill, yoga-loving cousin who went on a spiritual retreat and came back more zen without any of the jitters. Imagine being alert and calm at the same time while not having trouble falling asleep at night. Not only does mud water give you that morning boost you need, but it's also packed with adaptogens, antioxidants, and all those other fancy health words that make you feel superior to your coffee drinking friends. I've been using mud water for a few weeks now. Hmm. I got to say, it's a game changer. The blend I received and used is the masala chai with lion's mane, reishi, turmeric, and Himalayan salt for a delicious iced refresher in the morning with just a hint of caffeine, or you can do it hot. My favorite part, no jitters and no crash. I felt focused and calm throughout the day and didn't have any trouble sleeping at night. I even tried it iced, like my usual cold brew, and it was fantastic. Plus, the free rechargeable frother they send makes mixing it up a breeze. For a limited time, our listeners get up to 43% off your entire order. Free shipping and a free rechargeable frother when you use our exclusive link. Head to mudwater.com slash legalaf and grab your starter kit. That's up to 43% off your order at mudwtr.com forward slash legalaf. After you purchase, they ask you where you heard about us. Please support our show and tell them Legal AF sent you. Start your new morning ritual today. And then Jack Smith's got decisions to make, which I assume he'll he'll tell the court on August 9th or August 16th that he's going to stand on his indictment as is and let her take this filter that has been given to her by the Supreme Court and requirement and filter the... Uh, indictment through it to see what survives, or he's going to reindict. If he reindicts, he's got to get the grand jury back up and running. He's got to take several weeks. It's going to be at least a month delay. And then that would set the case back and the clock back over a year, because now you have a new indictment 
defendants have have uh, rights, due process rights about that new indictment and motion practice. I don't think he does that, but it's it's something they have to have thought about and rejected if they're going to say no. Our indictment, as written, will survive the requirements of the new Supreme Court decision, Trump versus U.S., in the immunity decision, all to be litigated out in front of Judge Chutkin, who, according to her order just issued, is back in charge. Let me end the hot take with what is what is it she just ruled? There are, as we've said before on Legal AF here on the Midas Touch Network, there are several motions to dismiss that were sort of sitting around mostly briefed on the docket at the time that Donald Trump brought his immunity motion or immunity um, uh, argument that stopped the case in its tracks. And now that, it, that the case has restarted with those beautiful world words I started the hot take with, the court has regained jurisdiction. She's back in charge, getting the wheels back on this wagon. She's now gone through and said, all right, what can I, what can I get rid of quickly? The motion that was raised in October by Donald Trump, which is technically docket number 114 for those that are playing at home, argued that none of the four criminal counts stated a proper claim um, and therefore should be dismissed on the face of the indictment. I mean, look, they say, well, for instance, um, for the uh, 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 fraud on the U.S. government, there's no trickery or deceit, which is a requirement of the crime. I would refer them <laughs> to the fake elector certificates and the attempt to try to steal the election and steal votes around the country and have fake elector certificates recognized as real elector certificates. That sounds a lot like uh, a trickery and deceit to me, but not to Donald Trump. He also doesn't like the um, the arguments about the um, interference or obstruction of the official proceeding and says they should be dismissed because... And then they make the arguments that were actually made at the United States Supreme Court level by other Jan 6 defendants. Um, so she she's like, listen, I'm going to deny this. I think the indictment, um, the indictment as it was written before the, the Supreme Court decision, uh, I think is fine. However, she does say in the new order, I'm going to deny it without prejudice, meaning you can refile after we sort, let's get through the thicket and the minefield of the immunity decision and how I'm going to apply that. Because she's right. I'm not, she's not sure what of the indictment is going to survive. And 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 Trump should be um, aiming at the right indictment because this indictment may get shrunk down a bit. You know, she's going to surgically go through with, and really there's like fly spec, line by line, allegation by allegation with a red pen with a, a judicial red pen or blue pencil and just, okay, this, this survives, this, this doesn't survive, this survives, this doesn't survive. You know, it's going to be like that. It's not going to be the exact same indictment as we saw two years ago. And what she's telling Trump is just pop the brakes. You know, we, we, you filed it before on the old indictment. Let's see what the new indictment or the indictment amended or revised after I get done with it looks like. And then if you want to renew your motion, you can renew your motion, but pump the brakes for now. And the same thing with everything else. Just let's get through the immunity decision that I've got to apply for the United States Supreme Court and map it on to this indictment and see what survives. Because she's not prejudging this case. I mean, Donald Trump is going to argue that he needs briefing to show why, on immunity, to show why the entire indictment should be dismissed under the Supreme Court's decision. And as expected, the special counsel is going to argue on their briefing that hasn't been submitted yet that the entire indictment survives or most of the indictment survives. And there's going to be that battle. And shes that's what she's asking the parties to do, propose a briefing schedule to me on immunity to guide me in what I need to do. She's not going to do it without briefing from the both parties under due process. And, and she's telling the parties that now. So they're going to propose a briefing schedule. We can expect that Donald Trump is going to propose a briefing schedule that times out for some time in 2026 or 2025. And the special counsel is going to say, how about two weeks? Give us two weeks to do our brief. One week, thumbs up on that. One week for them to do their brief, a reply brief five days later, and let's get the whole thing briefed by August. Maybe the judge pushes it off till after Labor Day. But that's going to be the push-pull that we're going to see. Donald Trump saying, how about late 2025? special counsel saying, how about late summer? And the judge having to make a decision. Given her track record, I would think she's going to give 
you know, something into September for full briefing to be completed with oral argument in front of her, and then she'll issue her ruling. And whoever's the loser of that ruling gets to take another appeal to the D.C. Court of Appeals first, and then ultimately to the United States Supreme Court, which means that case, while back on track, is going to sort of still be stayed for a while while she does some other things to see if this case and the indictment gets up through the United States Supreme Court. First stop on the train after the D.C. Court of Appeals were to rule would be Judge Roberts, who's the chief judge and a justice and responsible for all things in the District of Columbia, ultimately. But you see, it's going to be a long briefing schedule. So I'm managing expectations here. It's going to be a briefing schedule. It's going to take us over the election. May not, and it doesn't really matter at this point, especially at the surge that Kamala's making. Uh, she's going to be Madam President. Uh, and if that happens, we're just talking about, is this going to happen before? Uh, I think I think if Kamala, if and when Kamala wins, along with her running mate, we'll learn about soon. I think the pressure on people going, we've got to get this trial done before the election, I, I think sort of dissipates. I think it's like we want to see it. We certainly want to see it sometime in 2024, 2025. But like the imperative to do it before the election, if we have Madam President, I think, frankly, drops a bit. But we'll see. I'm happy. I'm content that Judge Chutkin is back in charge and this case is rolling again. And then we'll have the 11th Circuit appeal about what Judge Aileen Cannon did and the mess that she made at Mar-a-Lago. And we'll have the appeals related to the 34-count felony conviction of Donald Trump in New York. And we'll have other Supreme Court actions. And see, Legal AF will be on the air for a long, long time, including all through 2024 and 2025 at least. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heery, heery, Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legal AF. That's patreon.com slash legal AF.